Hey everyone, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. <laughs> My name is Ebony Zidon. I'm a developer advocate at JetBrains for Webster MITE. And I want to talk about efficient state management with hook state. Okay, what's hook state? Well, it's understandable if you've not heard about hook state before. Hook state is um, not that old in the game. It's a state management solution for React. And one thing I really like about it, apart from Hookstate being flexible and extensible, is that it takes simplicity to a whole new level. So uh, I want to use this to do application to demo Hookstate. I know, I know that would do up right. It's <laughs> the only way I can show you um, create, read, update, and delete. The simplest way, rather, that I can show you that with a state management tool like Hook State, for example. So, right in Autodo app, we can complete tasks, that's updating the task. We can also delete tasks. We can add new tasks. So, do stuff. And I've decided to use two different components for this application. We have the to do component, which um, represents the not completed tasks. That's one component. And we have another component for the completed tasks. And these two components share the same state, uh, ways in hook state for state management. Now, if we go back to uh, IDE, uh, right now I'm in a starter code base, which means I'm not using hook state yet. Uh, this is, we have a store.js file and then we have task inside of it. What if global state management was this easy? What if this is all we needed to do um, to manage global state? We just have a variable and um, it's named tasks or whatever state we want, and we export it. Then we go over to our different components and all we gotta do is import it and use it. <laughs> Same thing with the not completed component. This is not hook state yet. This is just <clears throat> JavaScript, um, using JavaScript variables, export and import. Uh, you've probably used Redux before or React Context API or RxJS and all the rest. It, the state management, it works, it's, it's really efficient, um, state management with these tools. But it's complex, it's really complex. And I want it to be this easy. I want it um, that if I want to add a new task, I have just one method like what we have on line 10, like task.push. And then I have my new task. Instead of using um, extra slices, reducers, actions, and all the rest, or the spread operator having um, a previous state and then the next state and all that. Can I just do task.push and have my new task? This is why I love hook state. Now, let me go back to the main branch where I have, oh, that should be this, where I have the implementation for hook state, um, this to do application built with hook state. And right in the store.js file, this is how we're using hook state to create a global state. We have store, and that's equal to the create state method from at hook state slash core. So you want to install hook state that's npm install hook state slash core or yarn add hook state slash core. And why we have slash core right now is because hook state, remember I said it's very extensible. So uh, we also have hook state slash persistence, um, which helps us to persist states in the local storage, the browser's local storage. How cool is that? But what we need right now is hook state slash core and the create state method from hook state slash core. This is all we gotta do to create a global state. Uh, we have tasks right inside of the uh, object for create state method. So why I use an object is because I might want to add other things too. Let's say this is a global store and I want to add other things like something else. And this is my new state right now. This is my new state. I can, whatever, um, whatever methods hook state makes available to store, which which contains all the other states, is also made available to tasks and to something else. So if we come over to the app.js file, where we're adding the new task and on line 12, it's that simple. So add a new task, we have task.merge and a new task. That's all. Right now on line seven, we are using the use state hook from hook state to get the value of tags. So we wanna use tags from our global store. We have const, and then we're destructuring directly. We can say, we can decide to say this is const state is equal to use stage, and then the store we're importing from dot slash store. And then we decide to do store dot tasks. Yeah, but what we decided to do is destructure directly. And then right here we have tags and we can use that. Now in hook state to get the value of a state, we need the dot get method. So right here we have input value dot get. 
and that gets the value of this local state I'm creating on line eight. We can create global states, we can create local state. I'm creating the state for the input value and I just do that directly with the use state hook. I don't need the create state for this one. Uh, I wanted to be a global state, I use the create state method. I use the use state hook and then I have my local state and input value that gets, gets the value of my local state. And you can see right here on line 27, where I'm setting the value of input value to be whatever user types inside of the input field. And I'm using input value dot set. That's all, that's all I gotta do. And we have the completed component and the not completed component. Both of them use store. And all we gotta do is import store from dot dot slash store, which is the store.js file. And on line five, we have tasks from store. And then for completed tasks, what we're doing in this case is we are doing using tasks.get to get the to get all the tasks and we're using the filter method to get just the completed task. There's probably a more straightforward way to do this, but I want to show you how to work. I'm working with two different components and using that to access one store. And for remove task, what we're doing with hook states to remove the task, we're using the nested property from tasks to get the task we want to remove. So that is in task index. And how are we getting the task index on line nine? We have tasks.get dot index of this is a JavaScript method. So dot index of task and that's the task we're going to be getting from the remove task um, function argument when we call it right here on line 21. So we move task and task. So this is a particular task we want to remove. We get its index. We use the nested property from tasks to set the value of that particular task to none. This is how we delete something in hook state. We use the none value from hook state slash core. So we call the set method and then its um, argument is none. If you want to set this to something else, um, say, hey, this is going to be the new value of that particular task. But we want to remove the task and we have none. And that's it. This is me using hook state to access a store or we're getting all the tasks and to we use the .get method to get the value of the tasks. Uh, now we're filtering to get the completed tasks. To update a task, we have the .set method and then that's going to be the new value. Now to remove a task, we have the non value from hook state slash core. And that's all we got to do to use hook state for state management. I have a longer tutorial on hook state on my YouTube channel. So yeah, you can check it out if you want to see, um, if you want to see more about hook state, you want something more extensive. I also have an article on the subject on hook state. So do me a favor and check out my YouTube channel. I have other react state management, um, tutorials and also check me out on LinkedIn, GitHub and Twitter. You'll find the various articles I've written on my GitHub profile. So you go to github.com slash evidence is done. I have a link there to all my articles. And this has been nice. That's me demoing Hook State for efficient state management in React apps. Please check out Hook State. It's really nice work that the team behind it are doing. It's fast, it's efficient. I've used it and it works. It's been working well for me. All right. So that's it. See you next time. <laughs> Bye.